this woman. I said, what's going on? This woman has been Muslim for five years, and I'm a born Muslim, and I couldn't think like her. I said, well, I'm astray. I got to search for my deen. And alhamdulillah, until today, I've been practicing it. And that woman who saved me is now my beautiful wife. I couldn't say nothing except beautiful. I've been having blessings, as I told you before. I'm a rich man. I have empty everything in life. But that doesn't, that still has something that is lost with all that. So after I revert to Islam, I have no more of material things. I don't think of Lanvan or Al Majal or, you know, all that material things that I'm usually wear. So I'm just wearing the same. Now I want to be more Muslim attire. And I feel Baraka, blessing with my wife right now. And I'm happy with Islam with what I am right now. The next misconception is that the Muslim accepts the killing of innocents and nothing can be farther from the truth. In actuality, it is known in Islam that a person from ayats of the Quran, that a person who kills one of mankind unjustly, it is as if he has slaughtered all of mankind. I will say it again. In the Quran, we understand that statement from our Creator that he who slaughters or kills a person unjustly, meaning without a right, it is as if he killed all of mankind. This is one of the heaviest sins after committing or ascribing partners to the Creator without a right. To kill someone without a right is a reprehensible sin in Islam. Now, that does not mean that every single Muslim is an example to follow. It does not mean that every single Christian is an example to follow. Every single Jewish person is an example to follow. But the reality is that the religion of Islam does not stand for or condone the killing of innocents under any circumstances even in a time of war to go and to target innocent people is not accepted in Islam well I hope that clears up some misconceptions and we're going to be moving on to the next topic Before Islam, my life didn't have much direction. Confused going in different places, um, not knowing who was the real God, which was the real God, or if there was more than one God. So a lot of confusion in that. How I accepted was um, about five years ago, I had been put in contact with a sister who gave me all the answers that I was looking for as I was searching previously. Um, in my former beliefs, I asked many questions but never received any answers to those questions. This sister gave me all the answers I was looking for to the questions. and. If I asked another person who was Muslim the same questions, I got the same answers. My biggest question at that time was how Jesus could be God and God be Jesus at the same time. Since becoming a Muslim, I found that I'm part of a big family, a huge family with different races, different nationalities, different languages. Um, I'm more at peace inside. I know that I have one creator and that he created all of us. So I have direction, I have clarity, and I have a big family. <laughs> The 
the Muslim, even if you see them praying to that black box in the desert called the Kaaba, they're actually taking it as a prayer direction, and Muslims worldwide are praying in one direction towards that Kaaba or that black box that you see in the desert that the people make circumambulation around every year for the Hajj. And the Muslim doesn't actually worship that black box. That's just the unity of all of the Muslims worldwide, no matter what country or situation he's in, he prays towards that direction. I hope that cleared that up. If you would like to become a Muslim and have all of your previous sins totally forgiven, all you must say is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, meaning I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a God except Allah and Wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And I bear witness that Muhammad was his servant and messenger. With this step, you will have entered into the fold of Islam, become a Muslim, and placed yourself on the path to paradise. It appears that our time together is just about finished. But before you do go, there is a very, very important topic that I haven't discussed with you yet. And that is the importance of the Qur'an in the life of a Muslim. Well, firstly and foremostly, I would like to tell you that not only Muslim scholars, but Christian scholars and Jewish scholars all agree that indeed the Qur'an is a book that has not been changed throughout the centuries. Again, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish scholars all agree. And there is a verse in the Quran wherein Allah, the creator of the heavens, says, Verily, we have set down this remembrance, meaning the Quran, and verily we will protect it. That means that the creator, the one who lives and does not die, has said, We will protect it. Who could make a guarantee that throughout the centuries this book will remain in its pristine form except the Creator who lives and does not die? Anyone else, had they created the Quran, 